Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Plex on Docker using Ubuntu. So don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get started. In this tutorial, we're gonna do everything on the command line. However, if you're not comfortable with the command line, then you can download the Docker desktop GUI from the Docker website. You can also use the GUI for this tutorial if you prefer. And bear in mind, because we're doing everything in this tutorial on the command line, you can also use this approach with Ubuntu Server. So first we're going to run a command to install docker. That command is sudo apt install docker. I'm going to put a dash y at the end but you don't have to do this. If you don't do this then you'll just get a prompt asking you to confirm the docker installation. Great so docker is now pretty much installed um, and we're going to run docker dash dash version and when I run this, you'll see that Docker dependencies aren't installed and Docker Compose also is not installed. So we're going to run another command, which is sudo snap install docker. This will install all Docker dependencies and also install Docker Compose. As you can see, now when we run docker dash dash version and docker compose version, a version for both pieces of software are outputted and this verifies that both Docker and Docker Compose are correctly installed. Great, so now we've got Docker and Docker Compose installed. The next thing we're going to do is create a Docker Compose YAML file. Now this Docker Compose YAML file is basically a configuration which describes all of the containers which we want Docker Compose to run. It also contains the configuration for those containers, such as ports that the containers will run on, uh, storage volumes that the containers might use, along with any additional settings. Our Docker Compose configuration file is just going to contain the configuration to run Plex as a container. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a directory called Compose. And this is where I'll place all of my Docker Compose YAML files, along with any other configuration directories or files related to Docker Compose. In this Compose directory, we will create our first Docker Compose YAML file. This Docker Compose YAML file will contain our configuration for our Plex container. So let's now start populating our Docker Compose YAML file. I'm going to head over to the Docker Hub and get the Docker Compose config for Plex. Whenever I try to get a Docker Compose configuration file from Docker Hub, I always use the Linux server images. I find that the Linux server images are uh, very reliable, extremely well documented and very well tested. I've never had any issue with any of their images. Um, so let's go ahead and use one of theirs. So this is the Compose configuration for Plex. And if you want to know more about each field that is in this configuration file, then I highly recommend you read the documentation on the Plex Docker page. I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, great. So we've now got our configuration for Plex that will work in Docker Compose. We're next going to copy the Plex Compose config into our Docker Compose YAML file. So let's head back to our terminal and open the Docker Compose YAML file we created earlier. So we now paste in the docker compose config for Plex and hit save. So when we look at the compose configuration for Plex, we can see that it's expecting to mount in three volumes. Um, one of these is for TV shows, another is for movies, and another is just a generic Plex directory where Plex will store anything it creates at runtime, such as uh, on the fly config files. Okay, let's now create those directories. Then we're going to update the docker compose yaml file to reference the directories we just created for movies, tv series and the library directory which is the directory I mentioned earlier to house all of the Plex runtime configuration and data files. Amazing! We have now created the configuration for docker compose to run Plex so let's go ahead and fire up docker compose. We're going to run the command sudo docker compose up and we'll put a dash d flag at the end. Now this dash d flag is very important as it allows docker compose to run in the background as a daemon. If we don't add the dash d flag 
then Docker Compose will shut down along with the Plex container as soon as we close the terminal window. Awesome, Plex is now running. So let's quickly run sudo docker ps dash dash all. Now this will show us the information for the running Plex container. And we can use this information to confirm that the container is still running and it's ready to be used. Okay, so now we have confirmed that the Plex container is running and it's ready to be used. Let's now navigate to the Plex web UI to double check the Plex web page is being served correctly. So we're going to navigate to https colon slash slash localhost colon 32400 forward slash web forward slash. Now you may have noticed that we're navigating to this web page on port 32400. This is the port the container is running on. And if you don't like this port, or if this port clashes with an existing service that's already running on your system, then you can change this port in the compose file, if you like, to make the Plex container run on a different port. Okay, cool. So it looks like the Plex container is up and working correctly and the web page is being served. Okay, so you can see this is a login form. So it's up to you guys what you do next. You can either log in to your Plex account if you've got one already, if you don't have one, you can go ahead and create a Plex account and log in. Then, once you've logged in, you can configure your Plex server. So now we've done it. We've managed to get Plex running in a Docker container using Docker and Docker Compose. So great job. Um, the last thing I want to cover quickly is just to show you how to stop the Docker container. Because if you were following the tutorial closely, um, you're probably running Docker Compose as a daemon in the background. And if you're done with the tutorial, then you may want to shut down the containers you are running. So to do that, um, we're going to run the following command, which is sudo docker ps dash dash all. This will show you that there is currently a container running. Okay, so the next command we're going to want to run is sudo docker compose down. This will shut down all of the containers created by docker compose and it will clean up their history. We can now prove that the Docker Compose has cleaned up the Docker containers by running sudo docker ps dash dash all. And as you can see, there are no more running containers and their history has been cleaned up. So that concludes the video and I really hope you found it useful. If you did find this video useful, please hit that like and subscribe button below. I'm the Tech Taurus and I'll catch you in the next one.